Hey everyone, hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Wiens. I'm on the island of Kyushu, which is in southern Japan. And today we are going on an ultimate oyster shellfish tour. Especially in the winter, you will find oyster huts, which set up during oyster season, where you can buy oysters, you can buy all sorts of different seafood and shellfish, and then you do it yourself. You grill them all in front of you at a table within a hut. The biggest abalone that I've ever seen. That is a monster abalone. And all of the seafood. You're not gonna wanna miss any of it. It's all coming up right now in this video. Oh man, welcome, good morning again. This is a beautiful area. We're right along the coast on the beach. And even though it looks like it's warm and sunny, it's pretty freezing cold, but it is beautiful. The palm trees and located literally right up against the coast is the first oyster hut that we're gonna eat at this morning. I cannot wait. This is a big tradition, a part of the culture in Kyushu, and we're gonna have our first Japanese oyster hut experience right now. Oh, this place, as soon as you step into this hut, it's kind of like a permanent hut uh, made out of a metal structure, but you step in here and you can immediately smell the smoky fires of the seafood. You know that aroma that you get when you grill crustaceans or shells over fire? It kind of has that amazing smoky aroma to it. That's immediately what just greets you, what's just filling this entire hut. They have all the seafood at the front. Mainly you come here for the oysters and that's what seems to be everybody is getting the oysters. But then they do have some other seafood. They have some vegetables that you can grill. They have rice that you can pick up. It's kind of all do it yourself. You buy everything at the front. Oh, the scallops look really good as well. So we'll get some scallops, we'll get some oysters. We might get a giant squid, which looks amazing as well. Um, and then we're definitely gonna get a few plates of the oysters and then we're gonna sit down for, for grilling over the charcoal fires. And you need to pay up front everything that you want and then you sit down to start hanging out and eating. I love this. Amazing view, rustic location, and then the warmth of the fire as you're grilling food. But first things first, gotta start with a beverage, which is essential for eating grilled shellfish. And they have this whole card here where you can, uh, they give you directions about how to grill the oysters, putting the flat side down, cooking it for two minutes until the juice bubbles out of the oysters. And I think we need to wear the gloves because they're gonna be hot. Let's glove up and let's start grilling some oysters. We got vegetables, we got the turban shells, a whole basket of the main oysters. Let's put that squid on first. Oh, and the, the, the scallops are there too. So I believe that the squid is frozen. It might not be fresh during this season, but it definitely is local. That squid. Okay, squid is ready. Let's just throw the squid on. And then we've also got a couple packs of vegetables what I wanted to try. We've got some onions. And I think I'll just throw all these vegetables in the center so we have a full a packed grill. These are turban shells, I believe. Let's add a couple of the, look at these. These scallops look incredible, that color. And look at that meatiness on the center. I'll add one of each to these to the grill right now. Oh, as it hits that heat, it's immediately starting to clap. Look at that. Oh. Oh, that smells amazing as soon as it hits the grill. Finally, the main event is the oysters, which are completely unshucked, so it even teaches you how to shuck them. It says put the flat side down on the grill first. So we'll lay some of these oysters down. Locally caught, fresh oysters. Lay some of these down, a few more. And I think our grill is pretty much full. I think we'll 
we'll go from there and keep on grilling and eating. But this is so intuitive, it's so interactive. I mean, I love any kind of situation where you're able to cook the food in front of you because it offers more of an experience, an immersion of food. And this is a huge part of the culture in Kyushu, especially in winter, when there's so many of these oyster huts around Kyushu. Uh, especially in this general area. It's so popular because there's an abundance of local fresh seafood and just being in the warmth of this oyster hut by the fire grilling seafood is something that, I mean, they have figured out an ultimate thing to do that's an activity and that involves food in Japan. I think we almost have to start flipping everything. Oh yeah, the peppers are coming along nicely. This is like the whole condiment station. There's bowls and soy sauce. There's tongs. Maybe flip the squid. Oh yeah, coming nicely. Squid. I think what's also cool is that you can come here and depending on how much you want to eat, I mean, you can just get a little bit of oysters, you can just come here and only eat oysters or they have a variety of other things that you can choose from. But it's really up to you how much you want to eat. Uh, you could just come here for a snack or a full seafood feast. On the directions, they said to put in a little bit of soy sauce to the turban shell. Oh, that'll make almost like a soup because there's so much broth in there already from the turban shell. Okay, I think the oysters give the oysters a flip. Squid seems to be coming along, needs a bit more time. Oh, but definitely the pumpkin is ready. Let's try that pumpkin. Okay, pumpkin is my first bite. That is so smoky. Mm. Oh, that's delicious. <laughs> Nothing added. I think now is the time to cut the squid, because otherwise it starts to roll up and... <laughs> oh, it's juicy. Whoa. Okay. And then also cut up that, the antenna part. Okay, there we go. That should cook a bit more, even on the squid. And you have to look at these turban shells. They're just bubbling over. It's like a soup. Okay, all at once, I think almost all the shellfish are ready because even the oysters have popped open. It's time to start eating. I think we'll just go in for one of these oysters while it's hot and fresh. Check this out. It's bubbling on the inside and you don't even need to shuck it because it came open while it was, maybe it put on another glove, it will be. So let me grab the, what you're supposed to do is take the oyster onto the, the towel and that's the way you can kind of shuck, shuck them open. Although they're really easy to open, but you can see the juice, yeah, the hot boiling juice on the bottom there. Okay, first oyster and then I'm gonna chase with the oyster broth. That is packed with flavor. It is so briny and such an in-depth like complexity of flavor. Well, that oyster is incredible. That is so tasty. You don't even need anything on it. I thought I might need soy sauce. It's already perfectly salty, naturally. Here we go. I gotta have one more juicy one real fast. Look at, oh, this one. This one is full of juice. Look at this. So much broth. I have an idea. I'll put this into the, the soup. The oyster into the soup. Let's add a squeeze of lemon and then go straight in. Oh, oh the, the lemon is so good because it balances the saltiness. Oh, that's fresh. Oh, that's so tasty. And then you take your oyster shells and they have a, a bin here that's specifically for the oyster shells. Okay, I'm gonna try the, the turban shell. That's a boiling cauldron of soup though. Wow. Okay, I think we might need to let this cool off for a little bit. Oh, boy, hi. Oh, kind of like goes down once you take it off. Yeah, where's the, oh, there it is. I'm gonna pluck this guy out. Oh. Oh. Hi. I had a little difficulty with the turban shell, but Auntie wow. came over and showed me how to do it and just plucked it out. You kind of eat the whole thing and drink the soup. Let's try it. Mm. 
Wow. That's a little bit rubbery and spongy. Kind of bounces back in your mouth. Oh, really good though, really sweet. And then follow that with that boiling soy, soy sauce and broth. That is the flavor of the sea in the shell. Very tasty. Next up, that squid is ready. Oh, and kind of fully roasted. Oh, so hot, crispy. Yeah, I might have overcooked the squid a little bit, but it's kind of good at the same time. Kind of has that smoky char to it. Okay. Another thing we have to try is the special oyster rice. Rice with some oysters on top and some radish pickle on the side. So let's get some of that rice with an oyster. Mm. That's just delicious and simple. The rice has a little bit of a, a sauce to it, maybe a little bit of a sourness and a little bit of a saltiness. And then with those local oysters, fantastic. I just love the, the style of this, the hanging out aspect. If you could come here with friends, you could come here with family just grilling up seafood, enjoying the warmth of the fire with the view of the ocean. Okay, I still have to eat the, the scallop. I haven't tried the scallop yet. But then after that, we're gonna go for round two. We're gonna keep on grilling, have a bunch more oysters to eat as well, and just enjoy this oyster hut experience. Okay, I'm gonna go for one of these purple scallops. Oh, it's just full of juice. Ooh. That is perfect. I think that's perfectly cooked. I'm gonna go with a little squeeze of lemon. Let's try to, oh, look at how meaty this is. Oh, that's beautiful. But we need to drink that juice too. Mm. Oh, wow. That is so pure, so buttery and silky. Mm. Oh, and that scallop soup with the, the squeeze of lemon in it to offset that saltiness and the seafoodiness. Oh, that's so fresh. That's so delicious and pure. Oh, man. And that scallop just melts in your mouth. Here's a hot, fresh oyster right off the fire and make sure not to overcook it this time. Flaming hot. Oh. Mm. Oh, it's so good. So fresh and pure. And I love it when it's just half cooked like that. that lemon to balance the salinity. It's perfect. And we have one more thing to try, which is something that's very famous in Kyushu. Okay, so this is a very special thing, and it's, it's actually a sardine fish filled with something called menta, and menta is something very famous in Fukuoka and all of Kyushu. It's a salted and also spicy fish roe, and, but this one is stuffed into a mackerel, so we gotta try that. Oh, you can see how oily it is, both the roe and the, the sardine. And they're just fully loaded with the menta. Mm. Oh wow, that's delicious. Oh man. You've got the oily, smoky flavor of the sardine. And then that the menta on the inside has a little bit of spice to it. It almost has a cheesy kind of taste to it. Like a rich, like the roe, the saltiness, a little bit of spice. Oh, that is so much like umami in your mouth at one time from that preservation of the fish roe. 
and the chili and the, the oiliness of the fish coming together. That is so tasty. It's so salty though and so rich. It needs to be eaten with rice. Good thing we still have some of that oyster rice to chase it with. Well, that's a perfect combination with that, that roe with the rice to balance it. Mm. That's so much flavor. Oh, that was delicious and so simple and so plain. And it's so warm and cozy inside of the oyster hut. That was a fantastic experience. And again, a perfect place to come to sit around the fire to enjoy oysters and fresh seafood and the warmth of the fire. Uh, but we have one more place to go to and it's gonna be a different location. It's gonna be more across the peninsula here, I think for our next oyster hut experience to continue with this tour. That was actually a spectacular drive. We kind of crossed over to the other side of the peninsula and on one side we passed through a city called Itoshima or an area. On one side the gorgeous coast crashing waves and rocks, so beautiful. On the other side is mountains and also this area is known for their vegetables, so fresh, lush vegetable farms. But anyway, we have arrived to our next oyster hut. This entire town is just known for their oysters. There's so many places to eat oysters. There's so many oyster huts. There's some a little further down the coast, but I chose a place that is kind of tucked within the neighborhood, a real local place. They, I mean, they harvest their own oysters, and this is like a family oyster hut experience. Nishi, oh, this is the name. Here we go. This is the name of the place. Nish, Nishimaru. I can't read Japanese, but I, I, I heard the name Nishimaru. Oh, abalone. Mm, oh. Wow. 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 <laughs> oh, look at the size of this abalone. That is a monster abalone. We have to try it. And then they also have oysters. They also have turban shells. This is going to be the highlight of the meal right here, though. This monster abalone. Oh, wow. So we're gonna get some oysters and then we're also gonna get some clams because that's something we haven't tried yet. But this is the real deal family experience. It's her husband that dives, maybe free dives for the seafood, for that abalone, 10 meters below the surface to harvest that abalone. Konnichiwa. Mm -hmm. Oh. Wow. Half kilo. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's almost half a kilo of abalone. We decided to get half sashimi and half grilled. Grandma's gonna come to make the sashimi for us. Years and years of experience. Oh man, so that abalone, it feeds on seaweed, so they just clean out a little bit of that sack, which is actually like straight up seaweed comes out, uh, but then you eat the whole intestines, the sack and everything. She's just washing it off real fast and gonna sli start slicing it up, but she knows her way about all around an abalone with expertise by far. Like, I mean, I haven't even seen an abalone half that size before. Sashimi too? Mm -hmm. Okay. Coolest ever Japanese oyster family home experience. He even said we can come pick the oranges outside. It's a dai dai citrus, which we could pick right ourselves, right directly from the backyard family tree. And she said we can squeeze this onto the oysters as well. Okay, and now we're ready to go sit down. Okay, here we are. 
But the first thing, the highlight, is that massive, it's a Goliath abalone. So huge. Um, and they said we could just start with the abalone and when we are done with the sashimi, then you just toss it on the grill with some butter and just roast it over the charcoal. But when something is that beautiful and fresh, it has to be sashimi. Okay, so we, grandma gave us some little bowls with wasabi, a little bit of soy sauce, thin slices are for sashimi. Wow, it does not get fresher or more local than that. Maybe with a little bit of wasabi in the soy sauce. Here we go, abalone. The crunchy texture, it's almost like cartilage. Wow. That texture is unbelievable. Oh man, that's good. It's sweet. It's insanely fresh. And it, that crunch is just almost unbelievable, yeah. Straight up like cartilage. Wow, it crunches in your mouth and it's so crispy. And this is the intestines, that kind of like green, it almost looks like a horn, that green sack. Um, and they said that this is like the ultimate delicacy. So some people would eat the piece, but then others, they say we'll dissolve it in the soy sauce as a dip, but I think we gotta taste it first. Dip first in a little bit of soy sauce. Whoa. Mmm. Kinda just melts in your mouth. It's like pudding. It's so creamy, and it kinda like liquefies. Wow. You can taste it's fatty too, like really rich. Oh man. It almost has the flavor of uni, like sea urchin sweet and liquidy. Wow, okay, we should try mixing that into the soy sauce for the next bite. Mix this into the soy sauce because it kind of like it's slimy and kind of like liquefies so you can see that melts into the soy sauce. Take another piece of slice, thin slice of that abalone into that sack sauce. Oh, all of it together in one bite. That. That is a true taste of the sea, all in one bite. The different textures, the cartilagey taste or texture of the abalone, and then the rich butteriness of that, the intestine sac. Man, that is a, a new abalone experience for me. I've never, never had such a giant abalone, such a fresh abalone, and eaten sashimi this style. That's incredible. Oh yeah, man, again, sitting here in kind of the, the backyard, like warehouse or shed of the family home with the barbecue going, the hot coals in the winter, the freshest possible seafood, all family run. This, this is the ultimate oyster hut experience in Kyushu. And they're just so friendly, oh man. And she said you could actually eat these oysters raw, whereas typically they're, they're grilled. But we'll try a combination of both, but let's start putting the clams on. Let's stick a couple oysters on. Her recipe also, she said just one minute and they should pop open. Oh yeah, that's a hot fire. And then definitely be sure to save some of them to eat raw. In the meantime, as those are grilling, let's slice the oranges. Oh, nice. You can tell how natural that is with seeds. Gotta taste it. Ooh. Yeah. That's sour. Wow. Oh, that's so good though. Really sharp and not sweet at all. Just acidic. Okay, I think it's time to turn them over. It's been exactly a minute. Let's go. For the clams too. Flip over the clams, you can, they're starting to juice. The ash is coming up. Oysters, turn over the oysters. Okay. I found it leaking. Oh, it's ready. It popped. This one just popped open. It's ready. The soup is coming out. Let's move on to our tray. Oh, it's so juicy. 
Oh, wow. Oh, that's a beautiful, beautiful oyster. Drop this into the soup. Okay. And here we go. First oyster. It's so juicy with all the broth in it. Oh, wow. Oh, that's one of the finest oysters you could possibly have. So clean and pure. So just like, I mean, they say that the taste of an oyster directly relates to the environment where it's from. So you actually taste the environment where it's from. And if an oyster comes from like dirty waters, you can taste that in the oyster. But coming from the waters right here off the coast, the cleanliness and the pureness, and that translates directly into the flavor of the oyster. It's so sweet and salty. Okay. Like literally nothing is needed. Mm -hmm. It's already like a perfect harmony in your mouth. Wow. Okay, we have to try them raw, but then it also would be good with a little bit of citrus. Which one is it? Oh, this one just, just burst open with the, the juices. Oh, so much heat coming off of that fire. Look at that oyster. They're so plump. I'm gonna put this into that soup there. Do a little squeeze of that citrus this time. And let's eat it. Mm. Wow. These oysters are just absolutely the freshest, the highest quality. They're unbelievable flavors. With that orange that picked off the tree just seconds ago, that just kind of brightens that up and balances the saltiness. That's an unbelievable oyster. Okay, we have the clams. These are the, the clams which are just burst open as well with that soup. Oh, look at that broth, that clam broth. You're gonna wanna blow on that a little bit. That's piping hot and your mouth would be on fire. Oh, all that clam broth. Oh man. Mmm. Mm. Oh, the clam is so sweet. So fresh. Everything in here is the freshest you'll ever have. Clam is spectacular. Wow. This is shellfish paradise in Japan. And I love how it's do it yourself too. Not only is it delicious, but it's so much fun and so friendly and so laid back, so casual. I mean, we're in the backyard. Okay, I think we're ready to grill the rest of the, mm. the abalone. Stick this onto the grill. Yeah, they said to add butter to it. That's the recipe. Okay, so put that abalone on, it needs to cook for about a minute, and then you add the butter. I'm gonna try the raw. Grab an oyster, see if I can shuck this guy. Okay. Oh, there we go. Oh, maybe, oops, it should've come out the other side. <laughs> on the other, the bowl side. Okay. Wow, oh, that's gorgeous. Okay, we'll give it a, a nice squeeze of that citrus, that local backyard citrus. Okay, here we go. Oh, oh wow. These oysters are so good. You know, some of the best oysters. And with that citrus, it's more like a lemon than an orange, because it's just very sour and acidic. Wow, that's outstanding. Okay, so grandma just switched out a little bit of the charcoal to keep boiling that abalone, but it should be on its way. The butter has melted, it's gonna start sizzling, and then we'll try the cooked abalone. Okay, I think we're pretty much good on that abalone. It's coming along nicely. The sauce is forming. I think it's pretty much good. Let's try it.
That's equally as good, but in a totally different way. When you cook it, it takes on a totally different texture. It's not crunchy and cartilagey, it's more soft and tender. Just kind of melts in your mouth a little bit. You taste the flavor of the butter, the smoke. Mm. Mm. I think that's the best possible way to eat a Goliath abalone, half sashimi, half grilled. Maybe a dip in the wasabi would be good too. Dip in that soy sauce a little bit. Mm. Mm. That is unbelievably flavorful. The sweetness has come out. I mean, you cannot go wrong with a fresh abalone of that size. That is superb. By far the best abalone I've ever had. One more way, we have to try it. Wow. It's almost like a, like a rubbery chicken a little bit, but just way more flavor and complexity. The premium, that's like the ultimate premium seafood possible. What a way to end this Oyster Hut tour, pure joy from the sea. Okay, that is a, such a cool place, such an amazing family. Greatest abalone and oysters I've ever had in my life. That was a lot of shellfish. I'm feeling a little bit on a high from the oysters and the shellfish and the abalone, but I mean, those are some of the best oysters I think I've had. That massive Goliath abalone just took this place to the next level. The friendliness of grandma and their entire family and how when you come here, I mean, you're just directly supporting the family. They're, they fish, um, it's as fresh, as local as you can possibly get. So this place, I cannot recommend high enough. And then when you eat here, it's, I mean, you're literally just grilling oysters in their backyard, in their home. This is such a cool place. But I mean, I love all the oyster huts of Kyushu. It's such a great concept. It's a great way to hang out with friends and family, sit around the fire and just delicious fresh seafood. And even the way the Japanese prepare things, minimalistic without much seasoning, it just defines what Japan is. And the freshness as well as the locality, as well as the pride they take in nature and the environment and keeping things clean. And that's what immediately translates into the seafood that you eat. So when you're in Kyushu in the winter, especially the, the oyster huts open from around November through March each year, especially if you love seafood, this is something that you have to do. And it's a huge part of the culture, highly recommended. I'll have both of the places, the locations in the description box below that you can check out. And I wanna say a big thank you to you for watching this video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up. If you enjoyed it, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. And if you're not already subscribed, make sure you subscribe now for lots more food and travel videos. And then finally, thank you to Kyushu Tourism for organizing and for arranging uh, these places that we went on our food journey through Kyushu. And also be sure to watch all of the videos. We're traveling around this amazing island, eating some of the best food. And you're not gonna to wanna to miss any of the videos. So make sure you check out this entire series. Thanks again for watching. Goodbye from Kyushu and the Oyster Hut and I will see you on the next video.